Armex Blast Media, the industry's leading baking soda-based abrasive technology, when non-destructive cleaning is critical. Learn more about our 12 different formulations for wet and dry blasting at Armex.com. Jeff Alenko Diesel Performance and LDP Machine here for another Tech Tip Tuesday. What we're doing this week is something we want to do for a long time. Uh, it's going to uh, answer one of the most commonly asked questions, not only to us, but that I see on Facebook groups and forums all the time. And that is, what bearings do I need for my engine build? I see people ask all the time, do I need H or HX bearings? Uh, we see that a lot, and we're gonna show you how to properly answer that, because that question cannot be answered on a forum or Facebook or over the phone. It's uh, answered right here by measuring. So we're gonna show you how we measure and calculate bearing clearance and how to properly select uh, bearings. So we have a 6.7 Cummins competition engine here going together. Uh, this customer brought us a lot of the components. He brought us bearings, HX mains, HX rod bearings. Uh, and you know, the HX, what that means, the H is uh, hardened or high performance. That's your race bearing. And the X is one extra thousandths of bearing clearance. So one thousandths extra bearing clearance. So that's what the X stands for is extra. So therefore the bearing, the uh, ID is going to be larger, it's going to give you more clearance. <clears throat> so, you know, this customer, just like many, was told to get X bearings, so that's what he supplied us. So that's how we originally first checked it. Now we have standard H bearings, the mains and the rods, and we'll go back and check them and show you how to calculate bearing clearance. So, again, this is a question that can't be answered in any way other than measuring. So, we've got the crankshaft here. The crankshaft has been to our crank shop. It's been polished. Uh, first, they, they get checked for straightness, they get magnafluxed, and then they get polished. So we check them before they go to get polished, uh, just, just a rough check. And then when they come back, we go through and measure every journal and document it. So this particular crank, I've measured the rod journals, the main journals documented it. Now I've got my engine block here. I've got uh, standard H-series mains. I've got my girdle, I've got my studs. Everything's torqued to spec. And I'm going to go through with the dial bore gauge and I'm going to measure the ID and we're going to calculate the uh, OD of the journal, the ID of the bearing, and that's how we're going to come up with our bearing clearance. So in order to do that, you need a mic, micrometer to measure the journals. Um, and then in order to measure the ID of your bearings, you need a bore gauge. So we have a standard uh, bore gauge here, a dial bore gauge. This is a sun end, this is an extra long one. We have a standard length and then we have you know, several different sizes, but this is a very good high quality precision measuring instrument. And then we also have a digital one that I use for rods, use a lot of times for wrist pin bushings. Uh, this is a Fowler. Uh, this one's nice because it covers a huge range, but what's really cool, it's just, it's so fast. Uh, you don't have to worry about miscalculating when you're reading the gauge. So this is a digital one, but the downfall of this, you cannot get in there to get number four main accurately. So that's why we have the extra long one. So that's the tooling that you need. Micrometers, which you need a two to three for the rods, a three to four for the mains, and then dial bore gauge. So I, like I said, I've already used the mic. I have measured my uh, uh, journals on the crank. Then I set the dial bore gauge in our setting fixture, which I'll show you here in a minute. And now we're gonna go through and the number that we get is gonna be the difference or the bearing clearance. So I'll just check one of them here to show you. So we're coming in and the important thing is, whether you're on a rod or main, you wanna be perfectly straight up and down because your bearing clearance is the tightest straight up and down. It, it's actually looser on the sides. That's kind of like a reservoir and also lets the oil escape too. So you always wanna make sure you're checking in line. And when we get to the rods, I'll show you the proper way to check them. So you've got your uh, oil groove in the center here. So if you want to check uh, in front of the oil groove. Make sure you're not in it. Perfectly straight. So, try to switch around here for the camera. So, we rock this up and down. The smallest reading is gonna be accurate and it's 4.1 to 4.2. Now I'm gonna jump to the other side of the oil groove Check it as well. So we're checking on both sides of the oil groove. And we're right at 4 thousandths. I'm gonna come back here and check it again. 
Try to get centered between the oil groove and the outside of the bearing. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna come up around four two. So a, a couple tenths of a thousandths of taper, that's pretty normal. Your housing bore, uh, meaning the block or the cap, could have a little bit of taper in it. The bearings sometimes be a little taper. A couple tenths of a thousandths is pretty normal, no big deal. So four thousandths clearance is what we have. And again, that's because we, we mic the journal of the crank, we used the dial board gauge, and we, we measured the inside diameter of the bearing, come up with four thousandths. So if your, your journals are always gonna vary by a couple tenths, sometimes maybe a half a thou or more. So it's important to go back and calculate based on the size of the journal and where the bore gauge is set. Um, so this particular journal was actually a slight bit bigger than what I'd set my gauge to. So it's actually uh, 3.8 thousandths is what it comes up with. So just under 4 thousandths. So 3.8 is what I come up with. That's right where we want to be. And again, that's with the standard bearing, not an HX. So if we would have just thrown the uh, X series bearing, or yeah, the X series bearings in, we'd be up at four eight on that one. Uh, this one would be five, so it would be four nine, four eight. On this particular application, that's not necessary. Uh, we would be five two and five three over here. So again, you know, you, you have to measure. You can't you can't just guess. Uh, you might get lucky, but um, your bearing clearance is very critical to an engine holding up and it does need to be tailored to the application and what will your intended usage. So sometimes we might want four and a half to five thousands if we're running straight 50 on a very high horse engine. Uh, and that also goes with rod selection too. So on the connecting rods, same principle, we measured our journal, we documented it, and we've got the digital bore gauge. So on an angle cap rod, you want to check in line with the caps, with the bearing. So I should say perpendicular to the caps. So you're not checking in line with the rod, you're checking you know, perpendicular with your caps. So we're gonna come in. Smallest reading. So we have three six and a half. So 3.6 thousandths. Oh, uh, is our clearance. So that's uh, right where we wanted to be. Um, I believe it was number five on this engine. Yeah, the, the crank pin of the crank journal was the smallest. So with an H series bearing, we were at uh, 3.9 thousandths. So again, if we would have just thrown the X series bearings in, be almost five thousandths oil clearance on the connecting rod. Totally unnecessary, too much clearance. Uh, this guy will probably run 1540, maybe 2050 in uh, the heat of the summer at, at the drag strip, but a lot of times this engine will probably be living with 1540. Does not need 5,000 clearance. So after measuring and calculating, all the rods got standard H bearings, and there was one journal on the, on the mains that we did run an X bearing. It was close. Uh, either way, really could have worked. But we, before we measure bearing clearance, we go in and again, with the fasteners being used, Gardel if it's got it, we measure the housing bore. So we measure the main tunnel without the bearings in and we document that. And I, I look that over before I select bearings, before I check it. And my number two main journal was at the extreme small end of the spec. So it's still within spec, but it was in the small end. So therefore I know it's gonna get more crush. It's probably gonna need an X bearing there, so I just automatically threw one in on number two, and it worked out okay. So it's not uncommon for us to have you know H bearings and half of the mains, X and others, uh, because we go through and we check every single one. So it's not uncommon to mix them. That's that's actually really common on Duramax and Cummins builds that will mix them H and X bearings. So we keep both on the shelf. Uh, if we open a box and we mix them up, we, we label the box, mixture of them. Uh, sometimes you get an X bearing right out of the box that will have less clearance than a standard because that bearing wasn't made right. Or maybe you had the upper and the lower were both on the extreme small end of the tolerance from Clevite. So that's not uncommon. That's why it needs to be checked. So that just happened, I think, about two or three weeks ago in a Cummins. We had an X bearing that was about one and a half, or I think it was 1.1 small. 
smaller than what it should have been. So very important it's checked and there's nothing wrong with mixing them like that. Um, so over here, we have two more 6.7 competition engines. These will be the next two getting assembled. Uh, these are getting apex rods, billet rods. That engine over there was Wagner billet rods. So all good quality stuff. We'll go through and we'll check all these. Uh, I've already mic'd these cranks. And so these are both late model cranks. You can see that we still haven't, you know, uh, removed the pilot hub off the back. So these are both late model cranks. I know for a fact this one here only had a little over 100,000 miles, maybe 104, 110. Don't remember this one, but they're low mileage late model. But both of these have been, um, you know, set to the crank shop already and polished. And between these two on the mains, there's a half a thousandth difference from the smallest on this crank to the smallest on this crank. And that's not uncommon. The, the range um, on the, the tolerance is one thousandth of an inch. So it's not uncommon to have a difference like that. So if, if from here to here is a half a thou or a thou difference, now you're talking a thousandth difference on the bearings, you could theoretically be two thousandths difference with the same bearing, same engine, just different crankshafts. So that's why it's important to check uh, to, you know, to check them properly, as opposed to just taking so many suggestions, throwing bearings in. And also you catch a lot of imperfections in bearings. We have caught a lot of bad bearings, either taper, where you check it on one side of the bearing to another. I've seen seven to nine tenths, you know, a thousandths difference. So almost a full thousandths difference from one side to the other. And then you'd use a ball mic and check it and you find the bearing shell was bad. I've seen where the bearing shell, you can tell wasn't put in the die right when they formed it in the factory, it was crooked. Uh, we've seen a lot of thrust issues caused by, caused by bad bearings. So measuring them not only is good for uh, bearing clearance, but you'll catch some defects too. So very important. Um, you know, as always, if anybody has any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, the, you know the average person isn't capable of doing this in their garage or even a small shop because of you're not going to have the equipment so that's when you rely on the machine shop that you're using the engine machine shop that you're trusting with your machine work uh should be capable of doing this they ought to have a dial bore gauge micrometers and be able to do this for you so if you're not capable of doing it pay them to do it it's well worth it and then i did want to touch this real quick on i still got a setting fixture so you know we have uh you know this high dollar tooling we have uh sun in dial bore gauges and then this is the setting fixture. There's a couple different sizes for different ranges, but we come over here, we, we set it. Then I always check it in the micrometer to make sure that everything, the mic that I'm using to check the crank, I'm checking with our setting fixture, and then we go in and measure them. And usually after we check two or three mains, we'll stick it back in the setting fixture, make sure it didn't get knocked off a couple tenths, go back in and check them. So very precise, very important. So hopefully this helps. Uh, like I said, anybody, any questions, give us a call. Thanks.